Hey loves, so in today's video, I want to talk about a song that's been on my mind recently called Keep Running by Taishi. I found out about this song a few years ago, but it's been playing on repeat in my head within the past few days, and upon revisiting the music video and really listening to the lyrics, I'm finding a very relevant message related to the experience of having a spiritual awakening and embarking on a spiritual path. I say all the time that experience is the best teacher, and this mantra has been instrumental in helping me heal from past trauma. Looking back at my life, I am now at the point in my spiritual awakening slash journey that I no longer believe in coincidences. I of course would never go through a lot of what I've been through again, nor would I wish for anyone else to experience it. but. I am nonetheless thankful for the experiences because they've been instrumental in shaping me into the woman that I am today. I think that everything we experience has, at the very least, some meaning to it. I will say things only have as much meaning as you personally attach to it, and this is related to the concept of choosing what you focus your energy on, but I feel a big part of even being able to attach a meaning is through establishing and maintaining your connection to spirit, aka your guides, ancestors, angels, the universe, goddess, whatever. And I'm saying goddess instead of god because I personally don't believe the source energy to be masculine, but that's a topic for another day. There are many ways of establishing and maintaining this connection with spirit. Your intuition is one such method. That intangible force is the very essence of feminine energy, thus making it, I think, the most potent connection to the universe. But there are also more material, aka physical ways of doing this, i.e. tarot cards, yoga, psychedelics, even something as simple as going outside to touch some grass. While it is important to maintain that connection so it stays strong, I personally don't believe the connection can ever truly be lost, only weakened. It would be a fallacy for me to admit that maintaining it is easy. It does take a lot of discipline, and for many of us who are having to overcome serious trauma in the process, oftentimes also breaking generational curses, it is entirely possible and normal to be intimidated, overwhelmed, and dejected. Because the universe knows better than anyone how hard this path is, your guides will often send you messages in the form of number synchronicities, animals, and music. These messages, of course, can offer actual guidance, but they are also messages of love, reminders meant to help you maintain faith within yourself as you embark on your journey. The process of raising your vibration ultimately is a sort of radio frequency communicator to your spirit guides. Basically, when you start the process of establishing better habits and healing yourself, you send out the message that you not only want better, but that you are aware that there is better out there for you. At your core, you're sending out the highest vibration out there, love. More specifically, a love for yourself. And because of this, you end up getting it back from the universe. The overall theme I picked up on from this song is about divine timing and maintaining the faith within yourself and thus the universe. Now let's get into the music. Taishi starts the song singing very high with every time I look over my shoulder, I'm getting older, I'm getting older. Her high singing conveys a sense of shyness and the action of looking over her shoulder gives an aura of anxiety and implies an inability to move on, but her knowledge of this inability also makes her feel rushed. She is constantly looking over her shoulder, but every time she does this, she is reminded of the passage of time with her awareness of her getting older. She feels as though she's running out of time. When she repeats this line, she sings with the same flighty voice, but this time there is a very faint, lower, calmer voice singing with her. The calmer voice can be seen as her higher self, a spiritual guide that exists within the higher dimensions that has heard her wishes, also existing outside the confines of humans' linear perception of time, allowing it to have seen her desired outcome. Harmonizing with Tai Chi is meant to symbolize companionship and offer comfort. She isn't alone on this journey, 
and since she's in the company of one who is more confident, she doesn't need to be afraid. And since it is Tai Shi's voice, the message is also that Tai Shi doesn't need to feel any anticipation as she already has what she needs to continue on her journey. However, the background voice being faint also implies the connection between her and her higher self is weak, hence why she is anxiously looking back and mourning the loss of time versus eagerly looking forward. The first rendition of the pre-chorus echoes the sentiment. She says, time is so sad, tie me to it, to express her desire to hold on to it. Tying it to her would prevent it from getting away from her. If it were, quote, strapped to her side, she'd, quote, never look back because there'd be no reason to mourn its passing since it would be by her side. The chorus of the song is her higher self's voice being amplified, literally and metaphorically. The message is for Tai Chi to continue to chase after her dreams, those things that she sees in her sleep, to become her highest self. Baby, keep running for me. Running isn't referring to moving swiftly and at a fast pace. Rather, it's about moving unrestrained and without hesitation. The next line literally says, don't hesitate, don't make me wait. If you want my loving, then you better start running. Loving is an adjective that means to be affectionate, but it is also a noun that means praise or honor. So, in order to honor and receive the praise of her highest self, she can't let the past hold her back. She must take the initiative to move forward. She repeats the verse from earlier, this time matching the background voice with her lower tone, evoking a calmer mood. She is in alignment with her higher self, resonating on the same frequency, and so she no longer looks at the passage of time as a hindrance. She's getting older, yes, but also more experienced, wiser, and closer to her goals. So she is more confident, hence her richer voice. The pre-chorus repeats, this time with echoing background vocals that punctuate the feelings of unease towards the passage of time, while also emphasizing that this anxiety is a hindrance. When she sings, tie me to it, tie me up is repeated in the background to emphasize how stifling the anxiety can be. The desire to hold on to time and or continuously looking back, longing for its return, becomes a handicap because your energy is no longer spent trying to make the most of time. You aren't taking advantage of it to do anything with it, and so it just passes you by. Spending your energy looking back means you're stuck in the past, which just ends up stagnating you since you aren't looking forward, ergo you aren't visualizing and focusing on your goal. The theme of divine timing and faith is also directly related to femininity, and we see these themes illustrated in the music video. The music video opens up with a tarantula crawling with a purple background while Tai Chi is staring at herself on a TV screen with a tarantula on her chest. Spiders in general are related to femininity due to the behavior of the females. The females treat themselves as the prize, with the males of multiple species very lives being dependent upon their ability to impress the females. And with the females being the primary web spinners, spiders are also related to the feminine themes of intuition, manifestation, and patience. The web weaving skill is passed down from mother to daughter for generations, teaching them to find an ideal spot and spin a web to trap her prey. Web weaving spiders have no need to go out and hunt. They don't chase, they attract and trap. Spider silk can be seen as a physical symbol for intuition in the sense that the webs are used to transmit the vibrations of the prey back to the spider to let them know if it's time to eat or they need to wait a little longer. The same way we use our gut feeling to let us know if something is meant for us. Tarantulas don't spin webs, but they do use their silk to carefully craft their burrows where they wait patiently in the ground, enabling them to remain connected to the earth. The vibrations outside eventually reaching them in the safety of their home, letting them know when it's time to strike. Again, they don't chase their prey, they catch them off guard. 
The purple color represents the crown chakra, the highest chakra that connects us to higher dimensions and beings, including our higher self. Noting this imagery, her climbing the stairs represents her undertaking the journey of coming into alignment with her higher self. Note the mirror on the ceiling. More on that later. The next color is indigo, representing the third eye chakra, followed by a yellow background for the solar plexus chakra and a green outfit on Tai Chi representing the heart chakra. The third eye is another connection to higher dimensions, not just because it is right below the crown chakra, but because the third eye is an energetic portal that allows us to see beyond the material plane, allowing us to see what our physical eyes can't. The solar plexus chakra is located at the stomach area, with its element being fire, as well as relating to the sun, making this chakra connected with kinetic energy and, in a sense, initiative. Think of how the stomach is used to process food to give us the energy to live. So, our solar plexus chakra is an integral part of us continuing forward on the path to ascension. This chakra gives us the energy to strive upwards and onwards, making it connected to our confidence. After all, without confidence, we'd be unable to develop and maintain the willpower necessary to manifest. The heart chakra may be the most important chakra in embarking on a new path because it is the core associated with love. Love is ultimately the center of our motivations to embark on a new path for ourselves. We recognize something that needs to be changed and thus love ourselves so much that we willingly and willfully walk away from anything that doesn't serve or tries to destroy us. Loving yourself enough to walk away demonstrates that we believe and know ourselves to be loved by the universe, making self-love a powerful subliminal for the law of attraction. Maintaining a love of self connects you directly to the love of spirit, opening up an energetic gateway for the blessings and assistance you'll need on your journey. So the message of these colors is Tai Chi undergoing a spiritual awakening thanks to her higher self. She is guided by her connection to the higher dimensions, as well as the vision of her third eye, gaining confidence and love to enable her to continue the journey in spite of her anxieties towards the passing of time and her attachment to what she's leaving behind. The color switches from yellow to red as she sings, Strap to my side. I think to imply the relativity of time in addition to being meant as a reassurance. Red represents the root chakra, the lowest chakra in our bodies and the closest to the earth, also symbolizing being grounded. You want to avoid having your sights so heavenward that you forget about what is going on here on earth. After all, we are spiritual beings, but we are having a human experience. Understanding the relativity of time means understanding that you always have time. The only time it is too late to make a change is when you're dead and gone, so you shouldn't beat yourself up about not having accomplished certain things at the same time as other people because we all have our own journey. Trust that what you know to be meant for you will come to you. It just may not be exactly when you expect it or want it. The extras in the background also demonstrate this lesson. Notice as she's on her journey, they are dancing in the background having a good time. When she begins singing with her lower, more confident voice, she is pictured laying amongst the extras rather than simply passing by them. A part of being grounded means also understanding that the material plane is just as important and beneficial as the spiritual. Enjoying the journey is just as important as accomplishing the mission. By the end of the song, she's come back down the stairs and we see her face on the TV screen, this time without the tarantula, I think to symbolize oneness. We don't see the tarantula outside of herself because she's incorporated its traits within herself, which is symbolized by the spider-like movements she makes with her hand during the dance sequence. The theme is also symbolized with the mirror at the top of the stairs. Mirrors reflect, so with the stairs going into the mirrored surface, it's a metaphor for her diving into herself to do her own emotional reflection, which is also related to the theme of time. You can look back on the past and feel regret, or you can reflect on the experiences you've had and the lessons you've learned. Her coming down back into the purple space reflects that she's done the internal work and coming out of it a better woman. She is in alignment with her higher self. I won't lie and say that this journey has been easy. 
There are some very, very hard and harsh truths I've struggled with and had to come to terms with in relation to this matrix as well as my own life. As I've said, embodying love and light 24-7 is BS. The only way to reach true enlightenment is to incorporate your shadows. Always remember there is no order without chaos. It's important to immerse yourself in the shadows so you can learn to navigate them so you won't get lost in them. It's also important to be patient with yourself. One thing I've definitely struggled with is the depression of my manifestations not happening overnight. I have a vision of how I want my life to be, but when it wasn't coming by the end of the day, week, month, etc., I would get restless and end up wallowing in self-pity because I wasn't where I felt I am meant to be. This began a miserable cycle of getting depressed at my current state of affairs, then using non-productive methods to distract myself from the depression, only to then feel guilty for distracting myself and anxious at the time I was wasting, again feeding the depression darlings. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. Manifestation is not about just sitting around twiddling your thumbs and then walking outside to find a million dollars in a suitcase. Manifestation is about balancing the esoteric with the physical. You can have a vision that you believe in and know in your heart of hearts to be your destiny, even if no one else believes in it. But it's important to remember that there will be some amount of planning and practical, tangible actions you'll have to do in order to see the manifestations to fruition. Something that a lot of us fail to realize when we see successful people is that most of them weren't born that way. Even in the cases of nepotism, at some point, someone had to do the hard work of laying the foundation of that legacy. Not to mention that maintaining a legacy is no easy feat. We see all the glitz and glamour, but rarely do we see the tedious keystones that happen behind the scenes. On top of that, how often do you hear successful people complain about how long it took them to attain success or wishing they would have done it faster? They simply worked at it until it was done. Divine timing is everything. Let's put it in the scope of getting rich. Many of us have in the past or are currently hoping for a windfall of money because we think it will solve all of our problems, but consider this. If you were to win the lottery tomorrow, are you financially adept enough to maintain that money so that you'll truly be able to live out the rest of your days comfortably? Give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day, but teach a man to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. If you're currently trying to manifest your ideal life, you have to have the discipline to be patient and know that your wishes will be granted in divine time. Technically, we are always where we are meant to be because even if it's not the final destination, the path is still a part of our destiny. The journey is preparing you for the life you want to live. Remember, experience and failure are the best teachers. Success is simply the reward for a job well done. If you're currently taking steps to manifest a better life for yourself, I am so proud of you. I know firsthand how tough it can be and often is to unlearn unhealthy patterns and teach yourself new ones. I also know how hard it is to maintain faith in the divine in a world that so heavily emphasizes the tangible. Even if it doesn't feel like it, the work you're doing today is making a difference. The amount of work you do doesn't matter so much as the fact that you're actually doing work. One step is good, five steps is even better, but in both cases what ultimately matters is that they are steps in the right direction. It gets easier every day when you do it every day, but don't beat yourself up for not doing the maximum amount of work all the time. It's okay and important to actually take breaks for yourself, especially when you're first starting out. It's about pacing yourself and having realistic expectations about your abilities. You're doing something you aren't used to doing, in some cases doing something that is totally different from what you've done your whole life. It's going to take time to learn the skills necessary to accomplish your goal. If you wanted to become a pro bodybuilder, you wouldn't immediately jump to doing the workout routine of the pros, right? That's dangerous. You'd start small and work your way up. 
try not to focus so much on when it will happen and just know that it will because you believe in yourself and you are actively working towards it. I was uploading a new video every week to get caught in the algorithm, but ended up getting burnt out because I'm not used to consistently making creative content. I ended up taking a whole two month hiatus from my channel and in that hiatus, I got a shout out on a more popular channel and gained more subscribers. The break and the feature gave me the energy I needed to create a new video, which again got featured on her channel, shout out to Mokomami, gaining even more subscribers in addition to being my most popular upload to date. I could have put pressure on myself to have the video done sooner to appease the algorithm gods, but look, I still got my desired outcome despite it not being through the expected method. I'll end this video with an affirmation that has helped me maintain my own inner peace and faith in the path I've chosen. So let's take a deep breath and then repeat out loud or in your head. I am safe. I am secure. I am abundant in all. I love myself. I'm looking forward to reading your comments. Thank you so much for being here. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next video.